Hi, uh, welcome back to the AEC Bar. I'm Lee Mullin, uh, and I'm back again with my colleague Peter Ingalls um, on the infrastructure side. And we're here today to talk about property sets. Uh, property sets, as we mentioned in an earlier video, are a way of transferring information throughout the building information modelling life cycle. Um, Peter, do you want to talk a bit more about them? Because they've been out a couple of years now. Yeah. So property sets is something we have exposed in Civil 3D. Yeah. Um, that enables you to add different type of properties to every single um, object in the, in, in the design. Mm. And that object could be an alignment, it could be a 3D road model, it could be a pipe network, but it could be any element in the drawing, even AutoCAD entities can have these, these property set data. And it's basically a simple definition of fields um, where you want to enter a value or you want to have a pull down list um, with a preset of, of, of choices you can mm. make. Um, properties that are generated automatically, um, for instance, for lengths, volumes, areas, that these type of things. So things you might want to take into a quantification setting yes. in, say, Navisworks, for example. Yes. Yeah. So and, and, and because of that capability with the property sets, all these quantifications, as an example, the quantification workflow in Navisworks is, 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 is enabled and, and um, gives you now one stop shop let's say for quantification of a combined project with buildings and infrastructure mm. as well i think that that's one of the advantages but one of the things we see in infrastructure projects as well is quite often you have um databases with um requirements design requirements yeah. or project requirements Navisworks is a great tool to make a link to a database yeah um, by having the, these property sets with unique identification codes for objects for instance we can set up that link with other databases and Navis works pretty quickly as well. Yeah. So uh, it's not, well, you probably won't do much with the data in Civil 3D itself, but it's the use of the data downstream in the process when you go to coordination, when you go to um, quantification, yeah. where it all becomes much, much more interesting. Yeah, so, so typically the design team in Civil 3D might be doing roads, rail, mm -hmm. um, earthwork, volumes, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, you know, and they might have to collect or generate information at that stage to say you know what what type of curve is this or yeah. what type of material is being used for this particular fill mm -hmm. um, and that's the kind of information that you can yeah. include there isn't it at, at that design stage yeah. uh, 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 an interesting point here is in, indeed that um, a property set is a combination of a couple of properties mm. but let's say that you're in a preliminary design stage or, or in a very advanced design stage the mm. properties that you probably want to add are different. Yeah. So LOD 1 or 2, 5, whatever you, you, you might have, might require different properties. So you can define different sets for different LODs as well. And, and more importantly, I think, is you don't need to have them all specified at the beginning of your project. Mm -hmm. um, one of the concerns you quite often hear is you need to have your template done um, before you start, but we typically do not know everything at the start of a project. Yeah. Since we can reference these property sets to existing drawings as well, it allows you to let the property sets grow with the project as well. So when yeah. you advance, you can make them more detailed and, and, and modify and update them as well. Yeah, and I think you know that referencing and templating is kind of something that's really important that we see people use across different industries. Mm -hmm. Um, so if, for example, you're a highways authority and you want to specify a certain set of data that's being collected at different stages in a project, you can provide that template for your consultants and engineers to use. Um, and, you know, if you need to make a change or an amendment, then that would propagate throughout all those different civil 3D users. So, you know, it's a really powerful way to ensure that standards are followed and standards are complied to. So, um you know, there's a lot of information in there. I think it's a really interesting topic and I'm sure you guys have more questions about it. If you do, um, please feel free to email in at the AEC bar um, at autodesk.com or again, comment on the YouTube uh, video. And, uh, you know, if you've got any specific questions or you want to know more about it, feel free to email in and we'll get Peter to talk a bit more about it. Uh, thanks again and Thank speak you. soon.